On this episode of InCycle, we're with Pelo Bilbao looking at his journey to the Tour. When we arrived to the last week of the Giro, they've seen that uh, I was going to finish in a good condition. They give me the opportunity to, to go to the Tour and here we are. 50 years since his first Tour de France win, we get a unique insight into the cycling legend, Eddie Merckx. In our papers in Belgium, there were pages and pages about cycling, and it was often about Max. But before all that, we go behind the scenes at the early stages of the tour. The InCycle lead-out is back for 2019, bringing you behind-the-scenes stories from the Tour de France you won't see anywhere else. Coming up, we're with the charitable side of Team Dimension Data. A young Belgian pays De Kerning Quickstep a visit. Mitchelton and Scott reveal their bikes. But first, Andre Greipel on his new tour shoes. So, Andre, we see you've got a new pair of shoes for this tour. Tell us a bit about them. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, again, as always, uh, there for a surprise. And uh, yeah, I was really surprised when the shoes for the Tour de France arrived and uh, yeah, I'm happy about it that uh, they, they honoured the statements I had so far in the Tour de France. And what happens if you win one here? Do you have to write it on in your own pen? I wouldn't mind to do that. So uh, yeah, for sure there's a solution for that. I guess you're hoping this is going to bring you some good luck here at the Tour. Of course luck counts but at the end uh, the legs <laughs> are doing the job and uh, hopefully they come back. Perfect, thanks Andre. Team Dimension Data had some special guests in Belgium, guests all the way from South African townships. The well-documented charity work underpinning the team extended to inviting young riders from the Velokaya Life of Cycling Academy to meet the stars of the Tour de France at the Grand Départ. So Velokaya, the word itself stands for Velo, is bicycle in French, as we all know. Kaya is home in our Tosa language back in South Africa, so it's the bicycle home. What we use is we use the bicycle as a tool to promote education. Every kid, doesn't matter where they're from, Belgium or Kailicha, kids love bicycles. So we use that as a tool to promote education. Once they come into our facilities, we then obviously use programs that we have in terms of the academics, the sport, and now we have newly funding or support, which is the nutrition phase. It's been a surreal moment for us, I mean, coming from Kailiche to being here in uh, Belgium for the Tour de France. So we were given an opportunity to bring about eight of our riders. You know, it's been a mutual thing whereby the, the, the riders are starstruck, I'll be honest with that. And obviously, our, that's our riders. And then the guys that are going to be riding the Tour de France as well, they're very happy and it's almost like a motivation for them to see these young kids all the way from Kailiche, Cape Town. And Sebe, what have you been up to while you've been here at the Tour de France? We came here as um, a team to come and support Team Dimension Data, um, give them um, some kind of good spirit to ride around to the Tour de France, and um, wishing them all the best. So, Remco, you're here at the Tour, but you're not racing. What are you up to these few days? Well, uh, it's close to my home, so I said I'm going to visit the team. And uh, tonight I'm going to be in a TV show for uh, Belgian TV, so that's actually why I'm here. Around, the, around Brussels, around the, the Depart. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to visit the guys, say them good luck for today's stage. And, uh, yeah, just it's always nice to be with the team. And does it give any inspiration to you to come back and be racing and competing at the Tour de France by being here? Yeah, sure. I Actually, I hope in a few years the, the Grand Depart will be again in Brussels. So then hopefully uh, my level will be high enough to, to start at the Tour de France and then in my hometown, in my home... Uh, the village will be really nice, but uh, yeah, I mean every Tour de France, wherever the start is, it's really nice. It's uh, it's a big moment of uh, of emotions, of motivation. And you've had recent successes as well, winning at the Belgium Tour. Have you been flooded with fans still, even when you're not in your racing kit? Uh, yeah, I mean the few days, the few past days were like really a lot of people uh, asking for some selfies, for some autographs, but. Yeah, you're here for the for the fans, and you know if you you have good results and that your name is pretty known in the crowds, you you have to do it. It's a part of the job. And if the the people are kind and do it with a smile, I do it with a smile also, and that's uh, really important that there's a respect from both sides. 
So Jonathan Mitchelson Scott have got some new bikes here at the tour. Can you tell us a bit about them? Yeah, they got the um, new Scott Addict RC bike starting from the tour here. They've been already test riding it a bit. And um, you can see all the line here with the new color design on, a bit more shiny for the tour. So yeah, it's uh, their new weapon for, for the tour. And what is new about the specification of the bikes? So we have a bike now that, is, um, uh, that has completely integrated cables. So as you can see, uh, all the cockpit and everything is clear from all the cables around. It's a bit uh, more aero than the, the previous version. Uh, not as much as the Foyt still, but a bit more aero. And there's one special blue bike. Can you tell us who that's for? This is the, the bikes of uh, Matteo Trentin. As he's a European champion, he gets a special colored bike to ride a tour here. <laughs> With its massive crowds, intense racing and the grandest prize in the sport on offer, few can deny the Tour de France is the biggest race of the season. Ideal preparation, it's assumed, would not include three weeks of racing at the season's first grand tour of the year, the Giro d'Italia. However, 16 riders who took to the start line in Brussels are hoping to prove that's not necessarily the case. Amongst them, Astana's Basque climber, Pelo Bilbao. The idea was coming from uh, my trainer and me. We were discussing this year if maybe it's uh, the moment to try the tour and I was uh, really excited with this idea of being on the tour. And, but I've seen that the intentions of the team were uh, going to the Giro as a main goal. When we arrived to the last week of the Giro, and they, they've seen that uh, I was going to finish in a good condition. They gave me the opportunity to, to go to the Tour, and here we are. Bilbao had worthy reason to be feeling good after the Giro. The 29-year-old had clearly enjoyed his three weeks in Italy, particularly after stage seven's ramp up into L'Aquila. In the start of the stage, I didn't have the intention to go on the breakaway, but uh, the day was going really hard and the teammates that they were already uh, tired. So I thought, ah, maybe I have to start also to go on the breaks. I was lucky to have uh, Andre Seitz, uh, my teammate with me, that. He helped uh, to keep on the, the, the rhythm in the front. And I was always third, fourth position, not to, not to demonstrate too much, waiting for the for right moment to attack. 1.5 case to, to go, and that was the, the key moment. It's Bilbao that decides to go. He has a little look over his shoulder. Why not? That moment, I could make an important gap, five, seconds, seven seconds, and with that gap, uh, yeah, it was difficult to, to catch me. Bilbao has got enough in hand inside the final 75 metres to celebrate a glorious victory for he and for the Astana squad. Two weeks later on the Queen stage, Bilbao showed his Grand Tour durability, upsetting the GC players to cap off an unforgettable race. I was not thinking of my personal victory until the last 40 case that the directors in the car started to, to see that maybe it was going to be possible to fight for the, for the stage. I was just behind Mikel Landa's wheel to, to try the, to find the right moment in the last 100 meters, 150 meters after the corner to, to beat him. I'm feeling surprisingly good after the Giro. Uh, the moral is high when you finish a Giro with two victories and uh, the last day making a good chrono. Uh, when you arrive at home, you are almost ready to, to continue training. No? I take five days a bit more relaxed, but uh, after one week I was already training hard and with the objective of the tour on the, in the mind. That physical and mental break will be important, particularly as he samples his first taste of the tour. 
It promises to be three weeks at the sharp end, with the Basque man's designated role as a key ally to Astana's tour leader, Jakob Fulsang. But with the Danish veteran's condition in doubt after a stage one crash, stage hunting could be on the cards again for Bilbao. In the Giro, I didn't plan what to, what to do or when I was going to win. It's just be patient and, and uh, wait for the opportunity. Some, sometimes comes and sometimes not. But the important thing is to be with the team and, and fight for the main goal, that is uh, the GC. After, we don't know what's going to happen. Maybe there's also opportunity for a stage. For me, this is the ninth year as professional and a long time that uh, I didn't felt this uh, like uh, being uh, new on a, on a race, no? For me to be here is like, yeah, I don't know exactly what they can expect. I know what about the, but uh, they talk uh, all the, the teammates that the, the first week is going to be really crazy and also uh, I've seen it you now every year in a, on TV but uh, now I'm going to leave it from, from inside and yeah, it gives uh, quite a lot of excitement in this, this situation. Where does the name Cannibal come from? Well, uh, he had a teammate, Christian Raymond, and Christian Raymond had a little girl. Merckx uh, was at 69, he was that good. That little girl asked, well, uh, who's that daddy Merckx? What's wrong about him? Well, uh, Christian Raymond said he wants to have everything. He wants to eat all the races. And then the little girl says, well, he's a cannibal. And Max was like that. Je crois que la motivation chez un coureur cycliste, elle vient tout d'abord parce que il aime le sport. Et je crois que ce qu'il faut surtout, c'est lorsqu'on a remporté une victoire, ne pas se reposer sur ses lauriers et continuer à travailler davantage. When I was six years old, it was possible to, to buy pictures of cyclists. And there was a picture of the young Eddie Max, who was the world champion with the amateurs. Um, that was the first time I ever saw a picture of him. This was not the era of the internet. All we had was cycling. We could watch the last 40 kilometers on television. In our papers in Belgium, there were pages and pages about cycling and it was often about Merckx. He was born in, in Brabant, in the Flemish-speaking part of the country, but uh, after a year, his parents went to the suburbs of Brussels, where they spoke French. My parents, au début, ne m'ont certainement pas encouragé à faire le vélo, surtout pas ma mère, parce qu'elle disait que c'était un métier dur et que laisser l'école C'était quand même un très grand risque. Well, his father was very severe. It was quite hard on Eddie. Uh, he, he, he has beaten even Eddie, but his mother was very soft. And they, they tell that Eddie was his father uh, in a bike race. But outside, he was his soft mother who hardly could say no. And in spring, he started with a team of Rick van Looy, Solo Superior. But Rick van Looy, he, he was the, the great rider in Belgium at that time. He had, been, had won all the classics. He had been a world champion for two times. And he was quite a bit jealous of that figure of Merckx. And, and he ousted more or less Merckx from his team. That's why uh, Merckx left after a year. And he went to the Peugeot team for two years. Eddie Merckx won his first great classic he was riding 
In 66 he won Milan San Remo. In 66 he was only 20 years old and it was fantastic because Milan San Remo is a classic of almost 300 kilometers. It's the longest classic. People say Milan San Remo is a lottery, but he was at the start 10 times and he won seven times. That's quite a good average. Je crois que Milan San Remo est une épreuve qui qui m'était très favorable dans le sens que tout d'abord elle venait au début de la saison. Euh, J'étais un garçon qui, était, qui avait quand même une activité hivernale, donc euh, j'avais une très bonne condition. Beaucoup de, de gens, beaucoup de, de journalistes ont dit qu'il qu fallait avoir de la chance pour gagner Milan San Remo. Je ne crois pas que ce soit le cas, je ne pense pas qu'on puisse avoir cette fois la chance. Well, he had no philosophy, improvisation, he improvised, he never planned, he felt the moment was there. He, he was not a, a brilliant sprinter. For instance, Eric Lamont, who won three times the Tour of Flanders, he said, uh, you had to be uh, away with the train of Merckx. When Merckx attacked, you had to be there. And he was, if he was not special, then you could beat him in the sprint. The riders of his generation also tell me, you just had to follow one rider. Eddie Merckx decided when a cycling race started, when the attacks started. Mentalement, je dirais que c'est ne pas sous-estimer ses adversaires, euh, essayer de chercher les moindres détails euh, où on peut, dans le temps voulu, faire la différence et, et d'être toujours concentré sur euh, la course qu'on va faire. I believe they respected Max, those of his generation. They knew he was the best, but they did their best to beat him. Uh, Roger de Vlaming, for instance, he said uh, a victory on Eddie was worth three victories on another rider. The race which is the most respected in our country in Belgium is the Tour de France. And in 1969, it was 30 years ago that a Belgian had won. The way Merckx won his Tour de France, his first Tour de France, with almost 18 minutes advance to Roger Pinchon the second. That was so fantastic. After a week we were for sure. It was the, the race on the Ballon d'Alsace. The great favorites such as Gimondi, Poulidor, Janssen, Pinchon, they were already at more than four minutes. And then the journalist says, the tour is over. In one week we knew and then, then came the great day, the day he won in Mourenks, in the Pyrenees, with the Tourmalet and the Obisque. He attacked the top of the uh, Tourmalet, and on the Obisque, top of the Obisque, he already had seven minutes. Then he had to ride about 50 kilometers till Mourenks, and at the end, he had almost eight minutes. Then he was canonized. Then he became the most important figure of cycling, certainly for the Belgian. Après ma décision d'avoir euh, arrêté la compétition en 78, euh, il est certain que, euh, comme j'étais un petit peu, euh, disons, saturé de bicyclette, Pour moi, c'était très difficile. Ça a été un moment très, très dur dans ma vie. Je me suis retombé après dans, dans un vide, je dois dire, car je n'avais plus d'idéal. Et je crois que c'est très difficile pour quelqu'un qui, qui n'est pas préparé à arrêter la compétition, d'arrêter d'un coup et puis de se trouver dans un vide. Il a déjà gagné cinq fois le Tour de France. He already won five times the Tour of Italy. He won most of the classics several times. He had been world champion uh, three times with the professionals, one time with the amateurs. He was very sad he had uh, to stop uh, racing. He felt he wasn't good anymore. Uh, and he didn't know very good what he had to do. But one of uh, his mechanics had started a bike factory. Um, and he said, well, why wouldn't you start a bike factory yourself? And he started a factory of race bikes. Uh, he started that factory 
1980, two years after he had stopped as a, as a rider. It was quite a success. He was always prominent uh, in the Belgian media. He was always interviewed when there was an important race because he could say, uh, you won that race and that race and that race. And then he had a son, Axel Merckx, who became a professional rider and who also was, was quite a good rider. So that was again the name of Merckx, who was everywhere. So he's been always present, he's been always following cycling. We are still talking uh, once again about him. And there is also the Grand Départ, the, the Tour de France, which starts in Brussels, which is a way to honor Merckx, who won 50 years ago his first Tour de France in such a fantastic way. He says, I'm not nostalgic. I'm always looking ahead. It's the future that is important. But I, st I still believe inside he he's very proud of what he has done. He doesn't like to brag about uh, the great uh, races he won. He just isn't like that. 